Good morning. Today we're going to look at starting up the ATR 42600 in Microsoft Flight Simulator from Cold and Dark. So this is going to address some issues people have had with the prop brake getting stuck on in the aircraft. I'll explain what's going on after we've started the aircraft up. So how do we get this thing started? We go inside, we press Control 6 and we go and turn the batteries on. And that will provide power to the aircraft and you will see the second and fourth screens power up. They take about 20 seconds for the avionics systems to boot up. So we'll wait for that to happen before we do anything else. We could, while we're waiting for that, go and turn the nav lights on. So that just informs the ground crew that we are on the aeroplane doing things. So we'll just give it a few seconds for it to fire up. Okay, so we are immediately going to go and engage the prop brake and close the, the gate on the prop brake. Then we're going to go and turn the seatbelt signs on, for example. A lot of this is down to um, standard operating procedures of different air, air, sorry, different airlines, so you're going to get different orders of things in, in general. So we're going to go and arm the emergency exit lights, we're going to go and turn the windshield heating to on and ignore it, it says fault, that will go away later. We're going to go and put the enunciation light to bright, we're going to go and turn the oxygen system on and then we're going to start engine number two in hotel mode. So pump for engine number two goes to on, start can go to A, B or start A and B, it doesn't matter. And then we hit start, and then we come down in the cockpit, we watch the NH for engine number two. As soon as it goes through 10%, we can advance the fuel condition lever for engine number two, and the engine will fire up. And if you notice outside, the propeller is not spinning, but you will see heat starting to pour out of the back of the engine there. And obviously you can see the NH is increasing there. As soon as it gets to idle, you can go overhead and turn off the engine start system and you've got the engine up and running essentially. So having done that, there is more power being supplied now to the cockpit, so the rest of the screens are coming alive, so we just wait for that to happen. It shouldn't take too long. While we're waiting for that, we can have a little talk. We're going to set up the FGCP next. The, what does it stand for? The multifunction Sorry, the, con the Flight Guidance Control Panel. I always get these all confused. Okay, so everything's booted up now, that's great. So we'll set the heading to the runway direction that we're going to be departing on. So if you watch the, the bug over here, we're going to set it, set it around to about 240 degrees. Because we're at Booker, we'll be taking off to runway 24. Uh, we'll set the nav source if we need to. It's already on FMS, which is great. We'll pre-select the target altitude, so we're looking here at the target altitude at the top of the altitude ribbon, and we'll set it for 5,000 feet for our initial climb. Again, I'm just picking these numbers out of thin air. We haven't got a proper flight plan to work from today. We can set the common nav radios appropriately. We don't need to do that. On the pedestal, we could go and switch on the bearings to appear at the bottom corners of the primary flight display if we need to. And then we can go down to the uh, the FMS and program the flight management system. So go to init, go to position init, pick up the GPS location, go to sensors init, come back, go to weights, hop long press on each of the weights to program them. You can look these up in the tablet, it's a bit of a shortcut. Come back in and then we program our route. So if we go into route, we'll say we're going from Booker, which is Echo Golf Tango Bravo, over to Exeter, so Echo Golf Tango Echo. So that's that done. If we execute it, it takes us straight to the flight plan page. We'll just clear the discontinuity out for this simple example. So we're doing a point to point route there. That's that done. So then, once you've got a route that's got no discontinuities in it, you should be able to pre-select nav mode, which will result in L nav appearing on the 
primary flight display and VNAV, which will pre-select VNAV IAS. So essentially when we switch the autopilot on after takeoff, it will you know, immediately go into those modes, which is great. We can calibrate the altimeters, so press B to shortcut doing that. In the tablet, press Control 3. We're going to go and go to the aircraft tab. We would remove any um, tail props or close the doors, that kind of thing, while we're here. Go back into the cockpit. So we're going to go to performance mode on the display and confirm takeoff data. We can also go then and look at the trim so we can move the elevators into the calculated point at which the aeroplane will be in equilibrium at rotate speed. Okay, so we can do pushback at this point. So we would remove the wheel chocks. So in the tablet, go and get rid of the wheel chocks. We would remove the emergency brake. Okay. And the aeroplane can be pushed around now. We, now we don't actually need to push back, so we'll just sit here and pretend we're being pushed somewhere. And then we'll, we've been pushed and we go and put the parking brake back on to emergency, okay? So then we can release the prop brake on the engine, so we're pretending we've been pushed out. So we go overhead, we go and put the beacon lights on to warn people that propellers are going to start whizzing around. And then we press F to come down here and we press the hydraulic auxiliary pump. Now notice we haven't done anything other than just get the engine running and the fuel condition to feather. So we've not done anything else. So we just press the button once. Then we've got a 15 second window to uncage the prop brake, switch it off. The unlock light should come on. There it goes. The prop brake light flashes and goes out. And if we look outside, we can now see the propeller is spinning around. Okay, so if you look down as well, you will see the NP number is increasing. So we could, at this point, advance engine number two to auto. And the engine will pick up speed. And we can use that engine to taxi. Yeah? So if we wanted to get engine number one started at this point, it's fairly straightforward. So we go back overhead. We turn the pump on for engine number one. We put the ignition system on to one of the starters. It doesn't matter which. And you start engine number one. So then back down in the cockpit, you're going to monitor NH. When it comes through 10%, we can advance the fuel condition lever for engine number one to feather. See that happening and you'll also see the NP increasing this is the propeller and then when this gets to 10% we can advance the condition lever to auto there we go 10% on the NP and there we go so as soon as that engine is up and running you can turn the ignition system back off and we can prepare to taxi. So back overhead, we're going to put the probe heats on. We're gonna go and set the flaps to take off position, which we'll just do. We're gonna press the serve button on the EFIS display, which lets you control the transponder. So you can go and turn it on at this point if you need to, if you're using ATC. We could set the target airspeed. So if you look up here, there's a target airspeed if you're using VNAV IAS mode, for example. So you could go and set that to your climb out speed, whatever it happens to be. You'd obviously have to look at the operational, oh, sorry, the um, pilot operating handbook to figure out what that should be. Uh, we can go and turn the taxi and takeoff lights to on. So we'll go back overhead. Go and put the taxi lights on. And then essentially, yeah, we can go and remove the parking brake, taxi out and go take off. So we do that. So if you have got a parking brake controlled set up on your controls, it is only tow brakes in this aircraft, it's worth noting that. So if we then ease the throttles forwards, 
we can go taxi and take off. So the important thing there that seems to be the crux of everybody's problems with the prop brake in this aircraft is, well there's two things. You saw there some, an alert came up. If you run the engines too slow, the idle point lets the electrical systems run too low. So you need to be careful on taxiing that you have over 70%, I think it is, on the throttles. But yeah, the, the takeaway from the problems we saw, I'm going to stop here, we're not actually going to take off today. If you get a problem with prop brake, it's because you've started engine number one before you've released engine number two from prop brake. That is the cause of all the problems. So hopefully this was useful to you. I've written up the procedures. I'll put the link to them in the next video. Anyway, I'll see you again soon.